805 Comedy Underground, in association with Laramie Films and your robot overlords, present to you in this previously unaired, unedited, unscripted, and unscrupulous interview with the one and only Grant Cotter. Enjoy. Yeah, cool. All right. Hey, how you doing? It's your boy Blaine. I'm hanging out here at the Laugh Factory with the one and only Grant Cotter. Uh, just got off stage. Uh, he just crushed. You did fantastic, by the way. Thank you very much. I love your crowd work so much, oh, dude. Oh, thank you very much. Um, how much effort do you put in your crowd work? Is it something that you have to like apply thought to, or does it just come naturally? It just comes naturally. I put All zero right. effort into it. I see somebody and I talk shit. I get when I see a crowd, I just see a flat. Like they look two dimensional to me. Like you almost have to like have depth perception that I don't have to like really zero in. Like you zero in. Like you hit several people with comments, and that's not the first time I've seen you do that. You are fantastic. It's very rapid fire too. Oh, thank you. Very so it's much. effortless. So you're just you're just born with the ability. Well, yeah, you know I grew up being the funny kid in class, and I just. Talk shit on thirty kids every day, so I nice. grew up on it. I'm not saying I talk shit, but you know you're able to. But you were definitely the class clown. I was a class clown, and my all friends, right. my friends razzled me all the time, and I razzled them, and it was just like you know you bust each other's balls. At what point did you realize you wanted to do stand up then? Uh, when I was 19, I went to a comedy show, and the comedian was getting heckled really bad on stage, and he's like, "You think you can do better? Why don't you get up here?" And all my friends pushed me. They're like, "Grant, go do it, go do it." I didn't do it, but I was drunk, and I told the girl I was dating I did. So I knew I had to do stand-up to make up for it. So it was all based on a lie. I like that. I like that. Lying to girls is always okay. Lying to girls is the best. <laughs> think that, I've never been laid if I didn't lie to girls. The very, <laughs> the very first time I ever saw you was on stage at Oddball. Oh, no way. Yeah. And I, of course, was ecstatic. Anybody who was on the main stage was just like, I mean, you opened up for Louie and Bill Burr and Aziz Ansari and uh, Jim Gaffigan and uh, you came up like basically just, and, and Brody was, was hosting and that was just like this freaking just gigantic ball of this amazing comedic energy. Uh, how did you end up up there? Uh, broken childhood and years of stand-up comedy. And then some somehow I got up there. Was it, uh, you strike me as the kind of person who's doing a lot, you seem to be doing a lot of your promotion yourself. Is that fair? Do you have like any type of management or anything? Uh, yeah, but I mean, you gotta, as a comedian, you gotta sell yourself. You gotta promote and nobody will work hard for you except yourself. So you gotta bust your ass, get on stage every day, write every day, and you know, succeed. I have no fallback plan. I dropped out of community college twice for this. I don't think, I think a lot of us don't. I'm, I'm still in school, but I think about dropping out all the time. The third time I saw you was actually here. That's why I was kind of, I wanted to do the interview here and you gave me free tickets. And what really stoked me out the most is when I walked through the front door, you said, hey Blaine, and shook my hand. I was ecstatic. I was over the moon. And I'm like, ah, uh, because I'm like, cool, he gave me tickets. There's no way in hell he's gonna remember who I, I didn't even think for a second you would oh. even know who I was. So I was absolutely ecstatic. Thank you very much. So, oh, thanks uh, for coming I'm really to see me. I'm really excited that you're coming out to Ventura again. So um, I'm stoked. I love the 805. I've been kicked out of a lot of bars up there. Uh, then we get kicked of out of a few more. Yeah, you know, I love Chinese food, so I'm excited to perform <laughs> at the Hong Kong, Hong Kong Inn, and I look forward to meeting you guys and forcing you to put my stickers up places. I'm down. I'm down. The Grant Cotter has um, the um, what is it? I have one up on my wall. Grant Cotter has a posse. Has a posse, duh. Just okay. That's right. I do have one, and I have one in my sticker box because I collect stickers like a dork. Oh, right. And I have one in my box. Well, I'll give you ten more. I would appreciate that. On Oddball, one thing I noticed about all you guys is I, I really only paid attention to the main stage because um, I'm a tourist. All y'all had fresh, like straight out of the box, very brightly colored shoes. What's up with that? Um, I don't know. I feel like, you know, comedians kind of dress poorly, so maybe they're like... That's the only thing I noticed was their shoes because yeah, everything else... you know. Everybody like, seemed like... I was like, is this show sponsored by Nike or something? Everybody had just killer fresh kicks. Well, I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, nothing like a fresh pair of kicks make you feel... Look at you. You got fresh white kicks on. I'm like, trying to step up. <laughs> like, you know, you can have kind of a crappy outfit, but have some nice shoes, and it'll stand out. Because nobody will be like, oh my god, look at that plain black t-shirt and jeans he's got on. They'll be like, yo, look at those green Nikes. I like that. Is there anything... Like, I see a lot of guys, they do stand-up, uh, and then they'll get like a writing gig or like an acting gig, and then stand-up falls to the wayside. Do you, say, do you see that ever happen? Like, if you got like a, a regular, well-paying... Uh, 
uh, like sitcom type gig or something as an example, would do you feel your stand up would fall to the wayside or would you continue to perfect it? No, I'd continue it because stand up's what I love, stand up's what I want to do, it's my bread and butter and but you know they, the gigs like that, the acting gigs are what fuel your stand up. You get on T V and then people are like, Oh I like that guy from that show and then they come out and see you. So regardless, you are going to remain a stand-up comic, regardless of success in anywhere else, yes, writing 100%. or acting, and you do some acting, you haven't, I always get it wrong, IMDB page. I do, yeah. I, I literally looked it up about two minutes before I was going to leave the house, let me see if he has one. Shit, he has one. I don't have time to look <laughs> it up. <laughs> so uh, besides uh, getting kicked out of some bars, what can Ventura expect when you get out there? Ventura can expect to see me maybe wearing brightly colored shoes or not, I don't know. Uh, you can expect to have a great comedy show. You can expect to eat some good Chinese food, maybe. I don't know. I haven't read the Yelp reviews yet. You can expect to be indoors in air conditioning for up to 90 minutes. You can expect to get drunk on alcohol if you're over 21 and have the money to buy your own drinks. And you can expect to say what up to me and shake my hand and high five and let's be BFFs for life. Let me get on your Verizon network. Maybe he'll even get a sticker out of the deal. Yeah, everybody gets a free sticker from me. Here, here, here's another question. Are you double-jointed? Yes. All right. I don't know why you know that. Or why well, because I saw on stage when you did this, it was just there's a little bit of an extension. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Pop lock champion? Yeah. Do you play Galaga? Uh, well, not really, because I was born in a time when we had Wi-Fi, and, you know, we didn't have to be somewhere else to play video games we could play it at our own house <laughs> so it's like asking me if i play snake on my kyocera how dare you but yes i do play it and i can dominate at it because it's a simple game all right so i challenge you to a galaga off yo i accept your challenge and i'm gonna win i'm already calling it right here i'm gonna win i'm i'm, I'm gonna let him win um you have a website i do GrantCotter.com. Correct. That's how you know he's big time. Um, that's or where. That's how you know I had $14.99 and, and a GoDaddy account. <laughs> Dude, your website's awesome. Oh, thank I you like it. Much. I like it a lot. It looks very well done. I'm not sure how much of it you're doing yourself, but whoever's doing it, if it is you, it looks fantastic. But that's you've got your bio. You've got you write a blog, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes. You've got I, a couple videos on there. I got videos. I got tour dates. I got naked pictures of Blaine. I got you know all sorts of stuff. Oh, you did the Warp Tour, too. I did. So you're busy, dude. You're... Yeah, I just spent the past eight weeks on the Vans Warp Tour, and it was pretty fun uh, performing outdoors for teenagers in 120-degree heat in a tent while three metal bands are playing at the same time. It's pretty fun. I thought... But I'm looking more forward to being at the Hong Kong Inn on September 4th. Come to the show. Be there. Eat Chinese food. Don't use a fork for chow mein. It's not spaghetti. Use chopsticks. Do your head motion like this a lot. Mr. Carter, thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Blaine. It's Thanks always a pleasure. I look here. forward to seeing you September 4th. September 4th. September 4th, Hong Kong Inn, Ventura, California. Be there or I will hunt you down and kill you. I'll be there. He's not going to get killed. Oh, yeah. How's that? That's great. All right. Thank you. Thanks, dude. Thank thank you much, man. I hope so, too. I'm taking you up on that Galaga. Dude, we're going to fucking do it. Can we film that, too? I was getting into that. Yeah, let's film it. <laughs> I love that you're drinking white wine. That's so classy. You are a classy. Yeah, you just look, you exude class. I like that. I don't like a girl who drinks a lot of vodka cranberries because that just means that she's an alcoholic trying to get rid of a urinary tract infection. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's clapping. Ah, that's what he's drinking. <laughs> uh, I don't drink. I had to quit drinking because I kept drunk dialing people. Which is like the worst thing ever. Like, have you ever been so drunk you tried to text message someone from a payphone? <laughs> Do you guys know what payphones are? It's 2012. One time I got so drunk, I prank called the Navy. And they will call you right back. <laughs> They're like, hello, this is the United States Navy. I was like, B6, and then I hung up. <laughs> They call me back five seconds later, like, it's a federal offense to prank call the Navy. And you sunk our battleship. <laughs> you owe us 200, but click. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs>